the online design lecture series organized by the typography society of india i am very happy to note that we started off with a very clear idea that we should encourage youngsters students and practicing professionals in this collaborative effort to share knowledge and enhance knowledge so far we had four out of nine speakers in this age group of below 30 or around 30 we our first speaker was kimya gandhi on on young typographer i am very happy to introduce all of you to anaga narayanan she is the winner of the famous sota award for outstanding contribution to typography for those who below the age of 25 anaga narayanan is a n type designer from hyderabad like most of us Anaga was fascinated by letter forms from the childhood drawing them and collecting them this childhood initiation into the wonderful world of typography was further inspired by her father's offset printing press an alumnus of dj academy in coimbatore anaga interned at black foundry in paris and now works at universal thirst in bangalore where she contributes to design and development of indian language typefaces anaga is very interested in the variable type technology and she has developed a very interesting tamil typeface in variable axis and different axis she will be talking about the new typeface called ilai a variable typeface and will explain how she worked for last more than 2 years on the conceptual stage to the digital technology and worked on the various axes of weight and width and she has created an extremely beautiful and very interesting uh, typeface in tamil over to uh, you anaga hi um thanks for joining in my name is anaga Uh, I'm here to talk about my Tamil variable typeface. Um, firstly, thank you to Professor Shrikumar and Professor Tanvi for inviting me to speak at at these online events. I think it's a great initiative, and I'm really happy to be here. Hmm. Um, so, hi everyone. That's me. I'm Anika. Um, I'm from Hyderabad. Um, I studied four years of communication design in DJAD from 2014 to 2018. For my final year project, I went and did an internship at Black Foundry in Paris. Um, this was to learn more about typeface design because I had never uh, learned typeface design in college, um, and I wanted to see if I like drawing typefaces. Um, turns out I did, so I went and joined. Um, I went ahead and joined Universal Thirst in Bangalore. Um, this was in October two thousand eighteen, and I'm actually going to quit at the end of this month. Because um, starting Jan, I'm going solo. I'll be continuing work as a type designer. Um, I'm, I, um, I'm, I'm going independent. So most of my work is on Indic scripts. Um, and i've been doing a little bit of branding also lately um i i'm i'm mostly deal with tamil and a little bit of devanagari as well um today i'll be sharing my project called ilai um it won me the sota catalyst award which is an award that identifies a person 25 years or younger um who shows promise in the field of typography um and as a result of this i'll be going to typecon next year in philadelphia and speaking about um about the project and various others so about the lay itself uh it's a typeface that's um inspired by the psychedelia of 1960s um this is ilai it moves from a top heavy to a bottom heavy weight um and since it's on a variable axis it it you can have a smooth animation going between the two extremes 
Um, Tamil, as most of you might know, is a language spoken in the south of India. It's one of the oldest languages in the world. The script is also called Tamil, unlike Devanagari, where the script is called Devanagari and the language is Hindi. Tamil was written on palm leaves, um, so most of the shapes have curves in there. Um, because earlier, if, if you write, um, if there are a lot of linear shapes, it goes along the fiber of the leaves and it will tear the leaves. Um, so that's why curved shapes are used. Um, just like Odia and Telugu, which also primarily used palm leaf for writing manuscripts. Um, in spite of being um, a native speaker of Tamil, I've never learned to read or write Tamil because I was, I was born and brought up in Hyderabad. Um, so the first step was for me to learn Tamil, how to read and write Tamil. Um, so I started looking at the forms and um, this one such book had, ha had shown some really interesting shapes. Um, and it, it, it made me believe that Tamil can be quite experimental. Um, as for the glyph set, Tamil has 12 vowels and 23 consonants. Um, the top two rows are vowels, and these are all consonants. And this, when compared to Devanagari, is tiny, um, which was super beneficial, which I'll speak about a bit later. Uh, super beneficial for me in this project and my concept. And other Rajan had put this um, beautiful chart where he explains um, uh, the root letters of Tamil and the derivative letters. Um, it was super useful. It's something that I went back to quite often. Um, as for my imagery references, uh, as I said, I was um, inspired by the psychedelia of 1960s. Um, so there's not a particular poster or an image that I had taken inspiration from, but more from the idea of distortion um, type of image and and distorted letter forms, you know. This was one of the initial sketches I had made for the letter K in Tamil. Um, this was in de December 2018. And since then, it's taken about two years for the project to be over. I mean, it's still not over, but um, two years of um, not everyday work, but um, yeah, two days since the seed was sown. Since the typeface is very organic, I, I drew out a lot of variations for each letter. Um, and this is super helpful in, in having forms that weren't constricted by, by the tool that I was going to be using on my software. Um, so the pencil is more free flowing um, and I could, I could just explore much more. Also, I'm more comfortable with um, conceptualizing on paper first, um, so, but that's just me. Um, as for approaches, there were one out of two ways in which I could go ahead with the project. Um, I did a few sketches and I figured that these were the two approaches which I could go ahead with. Um, so the first one was where I drew the top heavy, the monolinear and the bottom heavy um, and interpolate the rest. Interpolate is a process of automatically generating weights in between. Um, and approach number two was to draw the top heavy, to draw this, the top medium, um, monolinear, bottom medium and bottom heavy. And by solely comparing these two highlighted glyphs. Um, the one on the bottom obviously looks more charming um, because it looks more, um, it, it, it had more intent. Um, the, this one on the other hand, for me, um, with my vision, this one fell flat. So Eli has um, nine, nine masters. Um, there's the top heavy, top medium, monolinear, bottom medium, bottom heavy, and one between each of them. Um, and, and this is the design space that I was going to be dealing with. So this is a working um, 
a video showing the working of, of the variable um, variability of, of LA. Um, you'll see how, how the shapes are like this, for example, the counter goes from there to something else altogether here, altogether at the end of the axis. And once I started seeing it move, um, it was very rewarding. Um, it, it turned out to be extremely fun. Each letter had multiple variations. Um, I was looking at different ways to treat the loop, this loop, um, everything possible actually. Um, so every glyph had multiple variations um, and I didn't hold back. I, I kind of just went wild and even if things didn't make sense according to the logic um, or that was set by another glyph, I just, I went ahead and um, broke it. So this is what the basic glyph set looks like. Um, this is the top heavy, top medium, monolinear, bottom medium, and bottom heavy. Um, a unique a unique thing about LA is the treatment and the unique solutions for, for various things. So for example, the loops here, if you compare row one versus row two, um, row one has very similar looking um, loops and it all derives from the same logic, but in LA, each, each loop looks entirely different and that contributes to its ambivalence and makes it more unique. Um, I wanted I wanted the the ligatures also to be treated in that manner. Um, so this is the ik plus e. I wanted to have this instead of having number two. Um, and the difference between the two is this joinery if you if you notice. In this one it's just um, it's just placed over. And to do this, it's, it's much more simpler than doing this um, because doing this would require something called anchors, um, which is placing a point on your, on your ematra and your cur, and it locks, um, by code, it locks when it's tied together. Um, but this, on the other hand, needed a special drawing, a special outline and design, um, to, to achieve something like this. Um, so this is the ik, so I wanted that for the ki. Um, the ku and ku, of course, would have a different drawing because um, it's, it's a different design. But yeah, I wanted this logic to continue across all, all the consonants. Um, so I had to draw, I had to draw all of it. Um, I had the help of Anurag, Gautam, and Rocky um, Hitesh Malviya. Um, which really helped with, with the production. Um, and, and now Eli has a different, uh, a unique drawing for each of the um, um, consonant vowel combinations in, in all the different weights. And if I were to do a throwback, um, this, is, this is Tamil, as I had said, and this is Devnagri. Um, and if I wanted to do a consonant plus vowel unit design for, for each combination with Devnagri, that would be nuts because it would, it would go on to uh, a number in thousands at least. Um, so this is advantages to me because Tamil is a script that has fewer characters um, and it, 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 laid, um, it worked out for me. There are uh, characters like arrows, currencies, mathematical symbols, and um, copyright, trademark, and all, all of those. Um, some very delicious looking ones. Um, 
there is a stylistic alternate for the ampersand. There is a, a rakshasa face because I wanted to have some cultural reference. Um, handsome builds. Um, okay, so as as for the logic that I had used for the punctuation versus the the pulley, um, if I were to treat this as the baseline, uh, I wanted. Okay, if I were to treat this as the mean line, I wanted the weight on the bottom half to be a little more than the top half. Um, so that is the same reason why the same dot is is smaller here but bigger on the baseline, and on the end of the axis, it's it's very small and it's much bigger. And in contradiction to that, for the top um, heavier weights, there is the bigger pulley but a smaller period. Um, in the biggest and the smallest. Um, and in ligature glyphs, I wanted each uh, matra or, um, or, or extension, the, the, the ligature mark, to have its own logic also. Um, so instead of just being a thin line here, I wanted to have some weight there um, to, to ground uh, and anchor the the form, if that makes sense. Um, and for the EMAS draft, for example, here, instead of just being a tiny thin line, I wanted it to have its own weight as well. Um, and, and here as well, um, for, the, for the bottom medium, top medium. Um, one big challenge was having such unique designs. Um, so, so in this for example, if you see, if you notice this counter, um, how it changes from this to something like mango, um, almost like a teardrop, again back to something like this, but at this extreme it becomes like a squished oval. Um, and this was challenging because for interpolation to work and a, a variable axis to work, um, to be smooth, it has to have the same number of nodes, which are these. Um, the placement of nodes have to be similar. And um, yeah, so that was super challenging. But I wanted each master to have its own quirk. Um, so trying to find that balance and having to compromise on some things is um, a little difficult, um, given that I was, I was headstrong on having um, having such quirks in each master. I uh, had, had to test out each, uh, each, each glyph on this axis, as I was saying axis is the variable axis. I had to test it out to see if it's smooth or not. And here you'll see how there's many nodes that are bumpy. Um, and I, I had to pay attention to all of these. So this meant that I had to test out uh, each letter in a big size on this axis and see if the nodes are okay or not, and then go back and fix it. And it's a whole iterative process. Um, so the the, the uh, umbrella process that I followed um, for, for the variable font bit at least is I first had my drawn masters and then I interpolated them. Um, I, made, I made fixes to the interpolated master um, I took it onto a separate glyph file because um, not all my glyphs were compatible. Um, so I was creating a master list of having just those which were compatible across the masters, um, exporting it, taking it onto font view. Font view is the, um, the, the software we saw on the previous slide, that's the UI. Um, it's useful for testing out fonts and uh, variable fonts in particular. Um, I viewed it at a, at a large size to see if there's any kinks in the outline. Um, and then I had to go back and fix all, all, all the outlines. And, and you know, this whole uh, loop is repeated. Um, and that's the process for one, but now I have to implement that for the rest of the glyphs as well. Um, so 275 glyphs in total and, and nine masters. Not easy. <laughs>
This is a few selected clips from the various masters. Um, there are symbols like the Om that is um, more infrequently used, Tamil symbols, um, the debit, credit, as Tamil numerals. Um, of course, all, all, all the symbols that we have on our keyboard. Um, and it is natural to see forms of faces in these because they're all so organic. Um, so don't be surprised if you find a caterpillar or you know something that looks like Kevin from Office, Nez Presley. It's but natural. There's also this psychedelic eye in the typeface. I was surprised to see that it works pretty well even in text, um, especially in these weights. This is the bottom medium and this is the top medium. Um, the, the more extreme weights, of course, work better on display and headings. Um, it, it also turned out to, to look quite nice in a 3D form because um, the whole typeface itself looks voluminous. It's almost like you can feel it's tactile, right? Um, so it looked pretty nice even in 3D. Some more posters, examples. And when it's all placed together, you'll see how, if you squint, you'll see how it almost forms this wave-like pattern. And it's like it's dancing, right? There's life behind this. Um, to sum it up and uh, give you an idea of what the typeface is, this is a, a funny composition, um, animation that's uh, composed by Venki. Uh, it has sound, so you might want to lower your volume a bit. Um, yeah, hope you enjoy. That's it from me. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around. Um, thank you to Professor Shrikumar and Professor Tarandeep once again for inviting me. Um, uh, to all the board members um, and viewers who've been watching, um, Kalapi and Gunaj, who, who might be watching this also, for, for really giving me the chance to go wild with the lie. Um, the rest of the team at Universal Thirst, of course. Um, yeah, thank you. If, if you need to contact me, this is my email address and that's my Instagram handle. Um, feel free to, to shoot me a message. Thanks, bye. Okay, so uh, thank you, Anaga. It was such a wonderful journey. And uh, am I audible? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. It is such a wonderful journey. And I was just trying to make calculations in my own head, you know, the kind of work in 275 glyphs into so many masters. And then you're looking at, you know, organic forms, which are sort of transforming. And, you know, I'm sure it must have been a tough... Uh, Thank you, Anagar.
such a wonderful journey and uh, just give me a good. moment there's some yeah. technical okay good it was such a wonderful journey and i was just trying okay so uh I was just wondering, you know, uh, how how long did you uh, spend on this? You said not every day, but on and off, on and off, and there must have been other projects which were going on. So uh, sometimes these things just end up messing your mind, right? Did you also had uh, dreams uh, of these bulbous forms coming and forming letter forms, you know, uh, uh, manifesting them into letter forms? It's it's amazing. I mean, I I don't have any words, you know, uh, especially. the way uh, the entire uh, sort of the visual balance when you look at all the uh, all the weights and the variable this thing right yeah um okay so how long did it take the first sketch was actually in december 2018 and the idea of the typeface um in terms of the 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 workability of it was in such a way that it was my personal project for universal thirst um which is a really cool concept that uh, kalapi and gunar has um mm-hmm. said which is you each each person each designer dedicates one day of the week um for a, for a personal project um right from design conceptualization everything you know um and this is really cool because um especially when you're working in such jobs or such foundries you usually make commercial project or things for yeah. the foundry but without having time for your own idea um so i was actually born out of out of this uh, space of a personal project and that's when i knew okay i could do what whatever i wanted to do because i needed a vent the other projects that were ongoing at that time were were more serious and um a little dull in terms of like this um so i wanted to just like go go wild and that's how i started um all in all i think it would have taken about a year um about a years worth of work uh and as of last week actually i was doing this kerning tests um and i had this 250 page document and imagine such letter forms in in like a, in an 18 point um uh, i had to test out in all the different all the different weights uh and that made my head spin at the end of the day looking at all those forms and i couldn't concentrate on what i was looking at at some point uh so yeah it it gave me nightmare in that sense um but it's it's been fun <laughs> that that that's what precisely my question was you know uh that at one level uh you know it's it's an amazing thing that you know at universal trust you guys are encouraged to look at something which is beyond the everyday commercial requirement of running the office and fulfilling the needs of the clients and things like that Uh, but you said that you are a native tamil speaker right mm-hmm. uh, but you never got a chance to learn how to read and write uh, yeah. i'm a little curious uh, you know how how did you choose ke tamil typeface hi banana hai you know uh, because having been in paris and having studied in dj which is on the other coast you know there must have been options which you would have so tell us something about that back story that how did you narrow down into tamil you know? um I think the reason of me being Tamilian, but okay, before going to call a DJ Academy, which is in Coimbatore, um, I my Tamil, in spite of speaking at home, was not great. Um, and then after going to college, I started learning better Tamil. Um, mm. And I used to look at, at a lot of signs because DJ also is not in the city; it's in the village. Um, right. So we had to communicate with people, take the local bus, try to read the signs there, and. um so i wanted to learn tamil um and i thought the best way to do that would be to design a typeface and and turns out it was a good decision because of the size of tamil glyph set um it's tiny i think even gurmukhi is small in that sense right yes yeah so it turned out to be advantageous um and it wasn't much thinking um i had my options other options were 
Telugu, which um, I, I'm from Hyderabad, so Telugu. You grew up in Hyderabad, right? Yeah, Telugu is the other option, but it's uh, a difficult, complicated uh, language to design, um, a script to design, and Devanagari was the other option. Um, I don't remember what was the exact moment when I decided that it was Tamil, uh, but uh, yeah, I wanted to learn Tamil, so I think that translated into one. That to translated. Tamil. Absolutely brilliant, you know. Uh, but you know, uh, as an academician, when I uh, interact with a lot of these young students who join design school, you know, I'm talking specifically about an ID. I have found that uh, while we assume that most Indians know at least three languages: English, uh, their mother tongue, and perhaps the third language is the language where in of the state in which they have grown up. Um, but that is often you know restricted to the other two languages are restricted to uh, just speaking or maybe a little reading with difficulty and mm -hmm. the other track is uh, track of the thought is that because of work related uh, this thing people move you know people are not living anymore in their home state as the case was let's say 50 60 years ago or with our parents and all right so now people move across all states in the country and you know so what is your advice for these youngsters in terms of, uh, especially those who are interested in typography, you know, uh, we would like to, you know, know your opinions about how important it is to try and reconnect with your own roots in terms of the script and the language, whether it is through designing typefaces or whether we see on social media and Instagram these days, a lot of people take pictures of hand painted, you know, so, so what, what are your thoughts on that, you know, especially for the young students? Um, because often, because yeah. often, you know, we hear this uh, uh, little whispers in the background saying, "Hum bore ho rahe hain, hum kya you know? uh, So specifically for young design students, what, what are your thoughts on this? No, um, I would say even when you're drawing letters or when you're doing lettering, don't don't just think of lettering in English. Try to pick up lettering even in your native script. Um, okay. It, suppose if 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 you're a, a Kerala a Keralaite in Ahmedabad, try to pick up Gujarati. It's it's okay. You just at least try to observe the letter forms, and mm. then you can go back to Malayalam. Um, but definitely don't just restrict to to Latin or English, because that at some point you'll definitely be designing brand um, brand logos or something to do with the Latin script. Um, and and I think even even the teachers must encourage students to, to think more uh, vernacular and to design in a, a native or a script that is local to that to the student. Okay, okay. So uh, we have another question from, I guess, uh, uh, she's also a design student, KVSS Varshini. She has mm -hmm. a specific question regarding one particular slide on your presentation. You would recall where you were doing a comparative, this thing that you have a monolinear and you have two extremes and you did the extrapolation, or, yeah. uh, sorry, the interpolation. And then the approach to was where you tried to do it manually uh, yeah. to strike a visual balance. So her question is, how did you figure out that approach to and the fact that it would work better? Um, by or Maybe you could elaborate a little bit yeah. more about, you know, when you were going through that process. Yeah. Um, okay. So, firstly, the, how I figured out to be on the extremes and pushing it to a point of not being fully legible was also um, a nudge from Kalapi's side. He he said, "What if we push it to to the most extreme on either side, and then that would generate more variety of instances in between." Um, and to pick out approach to itself, if if you compare. Um, the two on that on that slider um, mm -hmm. approach to had more character um, and by that I mean instead of just being mechanically all monolinear on the top and heavier on the bottom I wanted the bottom also to have a little bit of weight on the top um, and that wasn't possible if I had a monolinear and something bottom heavy because naturally if if you have a uh, if you have something like a stick here and you have like the broader stick here, it will trans transform gradually from this to that. 
um, but I did want some variation in the middle, and that's why I decided to to design those in betweens, um, okay. which is those two masters on either side of the mono linear. So, in other words, what you are saying is that when you were uh looking at it yourself and trying to you know include those if i would say finer nuances or intricacies of even in the bottom heavy one how the upper apparently lighter strokes are modulated mm -hmm. you had far greater control on the final outcome in terms of the visual balance is that what you're trying to say uh I had more variation you had more variation yeah, okay yeah i had uh -huh. more more character okay okay uh so uh, moving on with this uh, you know there has always been this debate going on that uh, when you are doing a, a typeface design of a script um, which you are not familiar with right uh, so some people say that you know one it is important to uh, learn the script or at least understand which alphabet sound like what and then there is this other school of thought which says that oh don't let the language interfere in your response to the shape and form of the letter forms right uh, mm -hmm. so basically one school says that it's essential to be aware the other school is saying ke no don't uh, get into that uh, have a very fresh approach so what are your opinions on 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 this you know we know that you learned uh, how to read and write tamil at some stage of when you were working on this right yeah um i am more of the first school of thought uh, okay. where i think if you know all the rules if you know how it's done if you have good enough research then you'll know what to do and what not to do mm -hmm. um so basically learn the rules before breaking them um but that is my well. thought mm -hmm. um there are some other designers who have also done the second approach and have done it quite well um i don't think i would ever personally i would have the guts to do that but i mean to each his own okay okay <laughs> so while our audience is also warming up uh, and our volunteers are you know looking at those questions uh, if it's okay with you we can continue with our conversation yeah so you know i'm i'm curious and i'm sure um a lot of our other audience would also be curious as to uh, how many things as a type designer are you working on at the same time how many projects are you working on at the same time you know, specifically like this started with once a week drawing and you know spending time on your own personal project so mm -hmm. what were the other kind of projects which were happening at that point of time uh can't speak too much about it unfortunately but um commercial at universal thirst at least um numbers all, at, least, at least the numbers yeah. like were you working on two other projects and then this uh, elai started yeah know, there was there was yeah there was one constant um elai and some breakers in the middle like a two two day assignment or so um okay. but for me i i think i i would do a max of two projects sometimes three at the max at a time okay okay but i know of other designers who who can take up um a minimum of three simultaneously and and are so good at it mm -hmm. <laughs> okay uh, so uh, you know there is this very beautiful question which has come up you said that you joined the internship in paris with black mm -hmm. uh, as you did not uh, get to learn type design while you were in dj academy in coimbatore how mm -hmm. did you approach that internship uh, that is the first part of the question because you know uh, there are a lot of people who especially the young students who are seeking internship they are uh, a little anxious that if i don't have enough body of work uh, i may not be offered an internship right yeah uh, so I, i i feel that this this question has come from a student who is you know in the pre final final year and seeking internships himself or herself so the first part of the question is that how did you approach that internship how did you you know get in touch with black and uh, what were the kind of things which were happening there what kind of body of work which 
that you took because in a design college typically if you are studying communication design you have a wide uh, buffet of you know projects or academic assignments there could be one branding one type design one illustration and so on and so forth and the second part of the question which this person has asked is that while you were in paris with black uh, doing that internship what was the difference that it made for you okay. hmm. um Okay, so first, how did I approach it? Um, I had applied for my Black Foundry internship about six, seven months in advance. Um, and I think that was a good idea considering that it was um, out of India and there were like so many documents and paperwork to do. Um, but my application was actually a, a no-brainer. I just sent in my application because I knew if I would have thought and like okay i don't have enough work i'll have to make work for it i wouldn't have gathered the courage to apply for such a place um so i i just applied um wanting to know that i wanted to do typeface design um, mm -hmm. um so i i didn't prepare much honestly um and um uh, it it was pretty simple because i had gotten a response from them about a week after my application okay. um, and they said that they would like to get on a call with me um and on the call it was more elaborate where they wanted to know why i wanted to work and what is the what would i like to get out of the internship um mm -hmm. and yeah and that kind of solidified it my portfolio mainly included branding um a very a a very short typographic assignment that i had a um, type design course uh, that i had um, i had included that and if i look back at that portfolio now it's definitely cringe worthy um but yeah whatever typography related i could include i included um and it, it was great because it seemed like even they wanted to have a more global um uh, employee Uh, variety in in their studio um so i went there and the experience was really nice um because i think if you're starting out in type design having constant mentorship is extremely important um at least in the beginning stage uh, mm -hmm. because that's when you're learning so much and no one teaches you glyphs or robo font in college uh, in undergraduate yeah. college um so i had i had entered black foundry saying i don't know any of these softwares teach me everything i'm here to absorb whatever you can give me um and now that i think about it in my 6 month intern 6 7 month internship i mm -hmm. designed only a total of 40 glyphs <laughs> okay like very less um 40 Which script, script was it in tamil devnagri 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 okay. yeah uh which is like super super small but i'm glad that i wasn't looking at quantity and neither they neither were they they said okay no problem you don't have to produce a huge chunk learn the basics um, okay um, and 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 they taught me they taught me uh, how to draw how to place nodes um how to use a software it was I started from scratch, literally, um, and, and I was very patient. And you learned all those things. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it was yeah, it was a fabulous opportunity, um, and 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 yeah, that's why I think having a proper mentor when you're learning type design is super important. Who can give you patience and time, um, and it's rare to find such mentors, unfortunately, because there are such few type designers and there's so much work. it's it's like a whole paradox it's a whole um but yeah i would i would suggest irrespective of where it is in india or outside india it doesn't matter having a good mentor who can teach you and invest time in you um in the beginning stage is crucial we are live right now anaga okay. and this, this is going to be recorded so please feel free to go ahead and name and thank your mentors publicly you know <laughs> oh yes <laughs> of course um that's julie uh julie sudan who julie, is julie if you are listening to this anaga <laughs> is full of gratitude for you and we must thank you because what anaga is here today uh it's largely because of you and the other people she's going to thank now anaga please go ahead yes okay um so julie jeremy 
uh, Elliot, Gato, Jean Baptiste, um, Ilya, who is the, the graphic designer, and there's so much to learn from him because, uh, yeah, each of them, they're such superstars, <laughs> all of them. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, this is all your uh, mentors and colleagues and seniors while you were with Black in Paris. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so slightly tricky question. You can choose not to answer this. Uh, but uh, I have been getting a lot of these kind of questions from my students and I, I, I suppose a lot of other students elsewhere would also have a similar question. You applied for Black and they got back to you within a week. Uh, did you have a plan B? You had applied to other foundries as well? I did. I applied to like 50 foundries. <laughs> 50. Oh, so one in 50 is a is a is an acceptable number, right? Yeah, I'm I sure think others must have also replied back to you and yeah, there's very few type foundries who want interns. Uh, okay. I mean not want interns, but who can invest time in interns rather. Okay. Um, and I think it's only the bigger foundries who can act mm -hmm. who actually seek out interns. Um but yeah, I had applied to a lot of places. In fact, it wasn't a smooth ride um, between my acceptance to getting to Paris um, in terms of my visa and a lot of documents. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, that is, that is pretty weak. So that is, that is something which is, uh, you know, it is said that uh, type designer is one of those specializations which besides other skills requires a tremendous amount of patience and the strength to stick to it right because sometimes in between one tends to get uh, oh my god this is not happening or how long will it take and things like that you know uh, so we'll move on to the other questions and i'm quite glad uh, gv uh, professor gv shri shri kumar we call him uh, fondly we call him shri he is in transit he was traveling somewhere but mm -hmm. i think he's you know listening to our conversation so he has uh, uh, asked you a question that uh, how often, if you do, how often do you practice calligraphy, the conventional way, you know, taking a tool and an ink and, you know, sitting down? Um, I'm trying to be better. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm drawing constantly, like with a, with a pen, like I'm constantly drawing things. Um, but if I were to sit down and do an elaborate practice, it's not as much as I'd like it to be. Um, mm -hmm. I was doing an alphabets mentorship program and I had a mentor um, okay. where I wanted to learn Latin calligraphy. Um, because again, I, I, I wanted to learn the basics first before designing Latin. Um, and that was a nice regimen because uh, she had, she shared um, worksheets with me and teaching me the different kinds of, of um, types of calligraphy um, and so on. Um, but because of that mentorship, I, I got the push to actually start. Um, okay. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm drawing otherwise constantly with, with a pen. So especially for young people um, who are either fresh graduates and are looking at designing a particular typeface or even younger students in their second year, third year, uh, or first year maybe who who have a, a you know a typeface design project somewhere on their radar what is your uh, you know advice to them that uh, you know there is there are a couple of things which happens is that you know we look at work done by hundreds of amazing people and some of those things excite us we get inspired and then when it comes down to doing the brass stacks uh, some of us jump straight onto the onto the machine you know mm. uh, so what is your advice at that level that uh, when you're taking baby steps when you're still forming that idea that oh this is a kind of typeface which i want to design uh, whenever it happens uh, so what is your advice how much of analog how much of like you you showed some drawings which you know even while sitting in a meeting you know our mind keeps on working and we would keep on drawing letters and things like that yeah uh, mm. um, so what's your advice on that yeah uh so up until college, I thought that it's always better to draw everything first on paper and then go to, to your system and software. But I realized that some people actually think better on the software itself. Um, okay. And I think each person should kind of understand that for themselves. Um, because 
and i know of some type designers who who can't draw really well or their calligraphy skills aren't great but they're such great type designers um and i think it's a process of figuring out can you think better on the paper or on the software and a matter of just doing it um but if someone were to start a type phase design project um i would say sketch out either a few letters on your paper or on the system and then getting constant feedback is crucial um and not don't work in isolation um because a lot of type phase designers who are in the industry itself they are very happy to help and sending out your sketches even if it's a draft thing is is super essential uh without drawing everything and having to change it at the end um mm-hmm. because type phase design is also very iterative and you you first you have a few control characters you establish a rule or a logic and then expand um yeah so i think having constant feedback and and just starting <laughs> So okay that's... wonderful so there is a similar question which we received from the audience and uh, i think you partly answered the question but hear out the question what kind of preparation one has to do before jumping on designing a typeface mm-hmm. uh, one is understanding the script and forms as you said and what other exercises can one do while they are still students or what are the other kind of uh, assignments or things to do Uh, which you would recommend or suggest to students who who are who are looking at typeface designing as a as a project um, as a career as a future um type cookers are a simple exercise uh so type cooker is um is where you have a set of few constraints and mm-hmm. the idea is to just churn out uh, results really quickly um so if there's ever a time where you're stuck and you or or you just want to draw but don't know what to draw type cooker is very handy um so type cookers are a great exercise to also just prepare your hand and just to start drawing um mm-hmm. other than that looking at specimens um i think is also a great place to start because you understand more about form um and why a typeface is is designed the way it is what are the decisions that are taken um so that would be another thing looking at specimens um another third thing which is actually um super important and i think is i still do it um is opening opening up the font on a, a font editing software um and just looking at how the nodes are placed how mm-hmm. why you you wouldn't really be able to see it otherwise um but opening it out and seeing the outlines where the nodes are placed how are the handles constructed i think that is also very crucial in learning how to draw on the software right right i think that's a very important thing which you said because then we get an insight into how that other designer has yeah. designed the or constructed that particular letter form right yeah Okay, going back to another question, uh, two questions actually, which Shri had asked, left for you. One is, which is your current favorite Tamil font or typeface? Ah, uh, Mukta Malar. I think it's it'll, it'll be one of my most favorite. Ah, uh, okay. very clean, um, very well designed. Ah, uh, mm-hmm. it's by Adarsh Rajan of Ek Type. Um, yeah, Mukta Malar would be my favorite. Okay. Okay. And amongst the Latin ones. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's just so much. It suddenly opens up. To no, that's why my question was, which is your current favorite? It could yeah. be something which you just had a you know crush on yesterday. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, I really like Roslyn Dale by D J R. I think Rosendale or Roslindale. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's a beautiful set of typeface. I think that's my current favorite. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then there, there's another thing which he wanted you to, you know, respond to. Uh, can you talk about your collection of letter forms, like the Matchbox labels or something, which we uh, have found out that you've been doing since you were a child? uh it's it's stamps actually postcards stamps, stamps okay. and postcards um 
uh, so I was doing this when I was in college in my second year, and mm-hmm. um, it's it's uh, the hobby is called post crossing, where you just send a postcard to anyone. Post crossing. Yeah. Oh, you are a post crosser too. I am one too. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice. So yeah, you get please, please carry on. You get really cool stamps, right? Yes, yes, and also so uh, for the audience, you know, postcrossing dot com is an amazing platform where you just register and an address gets random address gets thrown on to you. You send them a postcard and then your address also starts getting circulated. So you also start getting uh, postcards from random places and random people. So Anaga collects postcards, uh, stamps through that. I collect handwriting samples from that. <laughs> yeah, even the handwriting, like such yes. great handwriting from some people. Yeah, yeah. So it's tell us, joy. you were in you were in college when you got to know about post crossing. Okay, then. Yeah, yeah, and then I just continued that uh, that hobby, and I collected like a few hundred of them. Um, and I used to look at the stamps and also handwriting, like you said. Uh, it's beautiful. I think it's it's so fascinating that in in like a one inch by one inch stamp, there is so much text accommodated. Um, and I remember I, I received the stamp once from Belgium, um, which actually holds the world record for the stamp, which has the most number of words in it. Wow. Or most number of letters, one of the two. Um, mm. So how it is designed is that uh, the stamp has a face, which is made out of letters, and it's tiny like i it wouldn't even be one point i think it'll be lesser than that really you you have that stamp with you so we're looking forward to your instagram post where you know you could share <laughs> that surely yeah. Yeah. yeah okay so uh, you know uh, it is a, a known fact and we've been hearing this in all kinds of biographies and uh, conferences where we you know meet designers and everybody that each one of us have our own quirkiness and idiosyncrasies as they uh, talk about. Like, uh, if I talk about myself, you know, I, 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 I design and collect calendars, right? And from small ones to big ones, and I mean, all crazy kind of things from all over the world keep on happening. What about you? I mean, how would you, uh, what's, what's your, the behind the scenes, what keeps you uh, sort of, you know, we all always have an alter uh, ego yeah. kind of an alter designer. So something which we do out of sight of the public, but it helps uh, us maintain our sanity and focus on what we are doing in the daytime. <laughs> yeah, that's super interesting because um, I have very short, I have faces where I'm obsessed with something and I move on um, okay. and very short faces like that. Um, mm-hmm. And currently, I'm in a transition where I'm trying to figure out what I can hook myself onto. <laughs> and like, I'm looking, des- I would love if you have any recommendations for any kits to just be engaged. Um, uh-huh. And I don't want to do anything design related. Yeah, uh, that is the biggest challenge. <laughs> yeah, and it's been so difficult. But something that I'm very fascinated by, um, as is, I-, I would say, two months is candles <laughs> and i want to make candles and you know candles smoke. wonderful yeah but yeah, i'm still that's nice. out so the lockdown uh, sort of pushed a lot of us towards uh, cooking cooking as the non design thing yeah uh, but then a lot of uh, non design family members also responded ke yaar the way you are laying out the table or plating the mm-hmm. food to <laughs> usme bhi composition dekhte ho <laughs> so you know there is very little which uh, we can say uh, is not related to design you know? yeah design sort of uh, is like the air around us or the yeah. medium which sort of helps carry everything so uh, i am just looking at the chat box in case we have any more uh, questions uh, because we're almost uh, towards the end of today's session uh, there aren't any questions anaga so we yeah. can conclude this and uh, you know on behalf of the typography society of india uh, all all of us professor gv shri kumar uh, myself professor uday and uh, chirag 
and uh, such wonderful volunteers you know students who helped us come uh, come together today evening and also hasgeek our uh, tech partners who made this live streaming possible a big thank you to all of uh, the all the entire team but a big shout out to you anaga uh, for taking out time and for agreeing to share this very very exciting and very very inspiring journey and we are really proud of you to be one of the sota winners thank uh, you uh, and a uh, couple of uh, websites you had mentioned uh, like type cooker and alphabets mentorship and all those kind of things yeah. so we'll collect those details and when we finally upload the uh, recordings and all those things we would also love to have references of you know those uh, websites which we had discussed during our conversation yeah, so I thank would... you Uh, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. I would love if you could include another um, another link in that. So it's it's a list curated by Namrata Goya, and it's yeah. a list of type resources. Um, so it has books, um, podcasts, uh, courses on type design, everything. Not just limited to Latin, but also has Indic. Um, yes. So please share that link as well. It's Absolutely, we'll do that. We'll do that, and thank you to each one of you guys who took out time on uh, a leisurely Saturday to join us and you know uh, share uh, Anaga's wonderful journey. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you so much. Uh, with that, we will conclude uh, today's uh, design lecture series hosted by the Typography Society of India. Each one of you guys, stay safe, stay happy. Don't forget to wear your masks regularly. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Have a nice Sunday. Bye. Bye.